time. Hello there. Space. And the force is what gives the Jedi his power. Reality. It's energy. Surround. It's more than a linear path. It binds us. It's a prism. It binds the galaxy together. Of endless possibility. You wanna buy some death sticks? I can hold it. Where a single choice can branch out into infinite realities. Do you have something, a cowl or something you can put on? Your whole body. Creating alternate worlds from the ones you know. The year is 19 BBY. Sheev Palpatine, Chancellor of the Galactic Republic, has recently revealed to Anakin Skywalker that he is the Sith Lord known as Darth Sidious. As Anakin leaves his office with the intention of revealing this secret to the rest of the Jedi Council, Palpatine begins his preparations for the battle he knows will soon follow. He removes his lightsaber from its hiding place in the Neuranium sculpture in his office, hides it in his sleeve, and begins to spiritually prepare for the coming conflict by embracing the dark side in anticipation of an incredible feat of force power that he plans to unleash against the Jedi to defeat them. Soon, the Jedi Masters Mace Windu, Kit Fisto, Sisi, Teen, and Agen Kolar storm into his office, prepared for battle. After a brief verbal confrontation with Windu in which he reveals that he's also the Senate, Palpatine uses the Force to slide the hilt of his lightsaber from within the sleeve of his robe to his hand, accuses the Jedi Masters of committing treason, and then unleashes his ultimate attack. A Force Scream, a technique often involuntarily used by Dark Side users in a moment of sheer rage that sent shockwaves of Dark Side energy around those in contact with the Scream. Palpatine's mastery of the dark side was so great, however, that he was able to use this technique on command. Just for good measure, Palpatine also employed the fabled 720 degree force launch corkscrew method simultaneously with the force scream to bewilder his opponents to the point of complete loss of movement in their bodies for a short period of time. This allowed Palpatine to gain the upper hand, and we all know the tragedy that would befall the galaxy due to the devastating effects of the force scream corkscrew combination. But, as with all Sith, hubris has its price, even amongst those as cunning and diabolical as Darth Sidious. For in a different dimension across the multiversal plane, a more arrogant Palpatine is met with different challenges. As Anakin Skywalker leaves Palpatine's office, now with the knowledge of Palpatine's true identity, this Sheev, instead of having time to prepare for the ensuing conflict, is quickly called into a briefing on the Republic's near victory in the Clone War with many other notable senators. Although Palpatine attempts to draw the meeting to a close quickly so he'll still have time to prepare for his eventual confrontation with the Jedi, Senator Orrin Free Ta, notable for his inability to read the room, gives a rather lengthy dissertation on Twi'lek delicacies and invited all of the senators in attendance and the Chancellor to his estate back home for the celebratory shindig once the war was over. Sheev, still needing to keep up his guise for a short while longer until he could fully turn Skywalker to the dark side, graciously accepted the senator's invitation on behalf of the rest of the senators in attendance and drew the meeting to a close, even though it was the last thing he would ever see himself doing. As he made his way towards his office, he was again reminded of the ridiculous monotony of political niceties, when from down the hall he could hear Master Windu asking to be let into Palpatine's office. Palpatine rushed into his office where he was immediately greeted by Grand Vizier Mas Amida, who started to rant about his disdain for Senator Ta. Palpatine shut the Grand Vizier down and directed him to the hall to stall Master Windu and the Jedi so he could have at least a few minutes to prepare for the battle. Grand Vizier left the office and could be heard babbling about his favorite operas, a subject for which Mace Windu had very little interest, and the strict irritation in Master Windu's voice was evident even through the door as Palpatine gathered his concealed lightsaber and began to prepare. Sitting down in his chair, he searched his feelings, trudging up past hardships, memories that fueled anger and hatred toward the Jedi. He needed it all if he was going to attempt a controlled force screen. Master Windu, however, was no longer tolerating the Grand Vizier's opera babble. He all but pushed the screen aside, leaving Master Fisto to explain the Jedi's rush in more polite terms to the politician. Blast! Palpatine was not going to have enough time, but it would matter not. His superior prowess as a lightsaber duelist should be enough to hold his own against the Jedi Masters. Master Windu enters Palpatine's office, followed closely behind by Masters Teen and Kolar. Master Fisto, who was still ironing out the situation with the Grand Vizier, who was still trying to preserve his failed attempt to stall for Palpatine, later entered the room. Palpatine's rage began to escalate during his exchange with the arrogant Jedi Master. He went back and forth with the man, even proclaiming with every fiber of his hatred that he was, in fact, the Senate, a comment which Master Windu vehemently disagreed with, which did spark quite a few flames of anger in Palpatine's heart due to his very much so wholehearted belief that he was indeed the Senate. This sprung Palpatine into action. 
He stood up against the treasonous Jedi and removed his lightsaber from its hiding place, igniting it. This was it, the moment of truth. Palpatine could feel the rage consuming his being, the passionate desire to finally, after decades of plotting, execute his plan against his greatest enemies. This would be that chance. With all the strength he could muster, Palpatine let out a high-pitched, shrill-like war cry and leapt forward, attempting to use both his momentum and the Force to create a shocking, violent corkscrew that would render the Jedi completely flabbergasted. He overestimated the amount of dark side energy he would need to perform both feats, for he was only able to spin in a half corkscrew, and his Force scream barely seemed to amount to a Force yell. The Jedi weren't phased in the slightest, but they were rather confused why anyone would try to even attempt those moves together. Maybe out of pity more than anything, Master Kalar stepped up and put his blade through Palpatine's chest. The reign of the Sith was over once again. The galaxy moved on. The Republic had won the Clone War and underwent a radical restructure of their government and their electoral process after Palpatine's identity was revealed to the galaxy at large. Grand Vizier Mas Amida was jailed along with the rest of Palpatine's supporters and loyalists. The Jedi once again claimed victory over the Sith, but their failure to see the Sith right in front of their noses was still too unsettling for most of the Senate and the Order. Grandmaster Yoda and the newly elected Chancellor Bail Organa decided to amicably separate the Jedi from having any direct involvement with politics. Master Yoda and Master Windu both also chose to step down and take the bearish vow due to their direct failure in seeing through Palpatine's plot. Master Aegon Kalar was elected the Council's new Master of the Order for landing the killing blow against Darth Sidious, and Master Kiati Mundi was promoted to Grand Master due to his wisdom, emphatic suggestion to assist with the droid attack on the Wookiees, and his persistent ability to get a word in during Council meetings despite Master Yoda and Windu's insistence on talking over everyone else. Anakin Skywalker, once again distraught over suddenly losing a parent figure, decided that his time with the Jedi Order had run its course. He and his wife Senator Padme Amidala Naberi both retired and created a home in the Lake Country of Naboo raising their twins in a loving environment. As for the Sith, their leadership, plots, and schemes had all been destroyed. Even though there remained those who carried on the teachings of the dark side, none ever came to prominence again. It just goes to show you how one Force Scream 720 corkscrew can change everything. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel for continued Star Wars content. If you like this series, let me know what your thoughts are and maybe some of the other episodes you would like to see in What If. I have over 50 ideas that I'm still working on, but if you have a suggestion, let me know down in the comments. Let's try to get this video to 15 likes. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.